In the previous lecture, you saw an example of a business rule that sends notifications to users via emails. But sometimes we want to output a notification or a message without disturbing the users. For example, when some process produces a lot of such messages, we might want to save those messages in a dedicated log to be viewed in a concentrated manner by a special user on his timing. In this scenario, we can use the log message action. This action makes use of the standard login capability of SAP. For those of you who are not familiar with the login mechanism, I will now quickly describe it in a superficial manner. There are two main transactions that are relevant to our discussion. The screen you see right now belongs to transaction SLG0. In this screen, we can define new log objects or watch existing ones. A log object can be thought of an address. Whenever a message is created, it wants to go somewhere to be saved. At the same time the message is created, it is given an address to go there to be saved. The address is composed of three parts. The first part is the name of the object, and the second part is a sub-object. The third part is called external ID and is basically an optional free text generated by the triggering application. For example, for messages created by BRF Plus, there is the FDT object. In it, there are several sub-objects. from which the FDT message action is the standard sub-object to receive any messages that are created by the log message action. I now moved to a different screen. This one belongs to transaction SLG1. This transaction is used for watching saved messages inside log objects. To view the messages, you may indicate the name of the log object and the relevant sub-object. Notice that here you can indicate the external ID if you know it. You may also indicate further information such as triggering user, time of creation and so forth. After you are done entering the restrictions for the search, you click on execute to watch the saved messages. These are test messages I have created earlier. You can see that one of the messages is an information message, while the other is a warning. We are back in BRF+. Plus. Continuing my example from the previous lecture, I want to use the log action in the business rule of the automatic resume check. Recall that I incorporated a mail notification in case of a passing resume. Assuming most resumes actually fail, and assuming that failing resumes reach their end of life business-wise, it is not a good idea to send a mail notification about such resumes. The recipient will be overflown with mails which he has nothing to do with. Instead, it is better to save those notifications into a log, just for tracking and controlling purposes. I will create a log message action for saving notifications of failing resumes. The log object and the sub-object are already set to the BRF Plus standards. I will keep those settings and just add an external ID. The external ID can be a free text. To make the notification persistent in the system, I need to check the persist checkbox. And now for the actual message. 
The message can be a free text or a predefined message that was declared in transaction SE91. In this example, I want to enter a free text. Of course, this isn't enough, as I would like the message to contain the applicant ID, so whoever watches the message will know which resume failed the check. As with mail notifications, I can use the ampersand character as a placeholder for an expression or a data element. Don't forget the index! After entering the ampersand character, you need to press enter to be able to maintain it. I can now select the applicant ID data element. Last but not least, we need to choose the message type. There are several options to choose from, but the most common ones are error, warning, and information. As this message should not indicate any problem in the business process or the business rule, I will leave the default setting of information message. I can, if I want, add more messages by clicking the insert message button. But in this example, I don't need more than one message, so I will click the remove button. This is about it, the action object is ready and can be activated. As with the send mail action, I will integrate this action to the function in a later lecture. In the meanwhile, I will simulate the action to show you its impact in the system. As before, I will check the execute actions checkbox, so the action will be performed despite this is a simulation. The action was done. Let's see what happened in the SAP system. I entered into transaction SLG1. To see the message, I will enter the standard BRF plus log object and sub object, and also my made up external ID. And here is the message. Success!